Uh, this is the Petra Vita podcast where I try and uh, get more interesting people than me on here so that we can uh, have a break from me talking on these streams. We're going to record this live on Twitch so people can ask questions in the chat. Just know that uh, alerts are muted right now so we don't interrupt the, the recording. Um, so, you know, if you want to drop that big dick donation, I might not even acknowledge it. So save yourself for someone special or at least for me later on without further ado uh charlie J, welcome welcome to the podcast uh, thank you everybody uh it's a pleasure to be here um obviously i can see domingo's in the uh the chat so yeah it's a nice little community we got going here yeah, absolutely so shout out to everyone Charlie's been a part of this community for a number of years now in the in the Discord, and we've been seeing each other work on stuff. Also, shout out to your room color. That's the exact uh, color of my, my bedroom back home. Uh, my parents, like, repainted it into yeah. a guest room a couple of years ago, and they put that, that green uh, color in there. So it's nice. It's nice. I'm not going to share everyone in my room at the moment, though. That's, uh, a, that's all right. That's all right. We won't put you under that pressure. Uh, a lot of times I like to, to start out on these. So we've had a lot of music people. We've branched out a little bit. We had a comedian and content creator uh, a couple weeks ago, and that was fun as well. But I think it's important for, for everyone, before we even get into the professional side of things, uh, a little bit of origin story from you. You, like me, you've bounced around a little bit from one place, ended up in another. Uh, maybe maybe give us a minute or two on the uh, the early life and times of Charlie J and how you got to where you are. Cool. So um, I think the most important thing, just to start from the very beginning. Um, so I was born in Australia, in Brisbane, um, in 2000, which is, you know, a few years ago now, but yeah. a lot of people think I'm older than I am, but, you know. Um, <laughs> And I, I've got two moms, and I'm a triplet. So there's me and my two brothers were born yeah. back in Brisbane many, many moons ago. And uh, from there, we've we moved around a lot. The first place we moved from from after living in Brisbane was uh, it was the, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I forget exactly where it was, but we were there for about six months. And then after moving there, we went to the the midlands in england so not too far from was the Birmingham. moving a function of your your parents work or where they wanted to be or um it was just where they wanted to be i think it yeah. was um you see, the thing is my i had my grandparents on one side were in australia and my mm -hmm. grandparents and the other were in the uk yeah um so that really happened to cause us to go back and forth a fair bit and my parents have, my parents have lived all over before the hand anyway which is why we were in the netherlands you know we got friends and family over there as well so gotcha. um yeah after that we moved uh yeah to the midlands and then it was the, the midlands back over to australia i'm not gonna bore people too much with all the details and then back over from australia to the northwest of england which is why i've got like a northern english accent i know yeah. um some of the people in this stream probably don't know but there's lots of different accents in the uk oh, wow. um yeah so this is this is sort of a northern accent and mm -hmm. um now i live in wales south wales and i've been here for two years now and um i mean chances are i'll probably end up moving again at some point um that's not because of where i live that's just because of what the way things have happened in the past <laughs> yeah i always end up moving so you know if we follow that trend i probably will yeah so you've been uh, bouncing around a bit when when was the the last move when you ended up in cardiff um, How long ago was that? It was two, just a little over two years ago. Mm. Yeah, I'm about half an hour from Cardiff now. So, okay. Um, so is it is it fair to say that so like these last two years or so have been probably the the two most uh, like years where you've really been like taking music seriously and having that as a career ambition and, and things maybe you had it earlier but it seems like you've done a lot of work i've seen your your branding your output and stuff like that over the last couple of years it seems like your uh, kind of main phase for this maybe starting performing live shows and stuff has mostly been in cardiff then yeah it's definitely been the uh the last two years have really been the uh probably the most important for that because although like yeah like you, you know you just mentioned i'd I had done some shows beforehand when I was mm -hmm. up north, but that was mainly through a youth club that I used to go to. Um, shout out to More Music. 
not sure if anybody who used to go there with me is watching this right now, but um, they were quite an integral part to my development as an artist. And I, I think even as a person, you know, I spent more time in that youth club than I did uh, probably at school in the last few years. But, yeah. Um, yeah, um, it was, I learned how to perform from there and they gave me opportunities to do a few festivals up north as well. And then when I came oh, down awesome. here, deciding not to go to uni mm -hmm. um, because I really wanted to pursue music. That's when I really, you know, knocked it up a gear. And I think it feels like every year I've just knocked it up another gear. Like mm -hmm. that's the, seems to be the current trend. So like this year already I've put out more music than uh, I had in, well, to, to have released two singles, yeah. an EP, um, four features. I got two more features coming out on, uh, on Friday. Yeah, stop like it. You're going to make me look bad. Everyone in bad. the stream knows I've released one song in the first two months of this year. Come on, come on no, now. Come on now. Right, man. <laughs> that's all right. But it's just, you know, I think that, I mean, that part of that is a combination with obviously mm -hmm. lockdown and not having too much else to do. But um, right. yeah, every year I'm just up a gear, just another gear, another gear, just up the work rate, up the, the output. I feel like I'm getting better. I'm doing more shows, networking yeah. more. The way it's got to go. I love it. What? Uh, how are your how your parents feel about um, the the no uni and the music? What was their reaction? How do they support it or not? If you don't mind me asking. Um, well, I think at first it was a little bit like, um, well, I was I was I was embarrassed to say that I was a rapper. I think mm -hmm. that's what it was. <laughs> um, I think m m what ever since I was little, my mum's always said she wished that one out of me and my brothers would have done um, music. Uh huh. But I also remember being um, like seven or eight years old and stronger playing on the radio. And I was like, yeah. proper jamming to it. And my mum said, um, you know, you can like any music as long as it's not that rap music. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously now, many years later, yeah. um, I suppose, you know, I am a rapper. Um, yeah. I think they've always enjoyed, I think when it's a bit more poetic, they enjoy yeah. it the most. Um and I think as they've seen that, it's something that I am passionate about and I do put the work in. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they have supported it. So, you know, I've got a lot of love for them for supporting me. You know, like I live at home right now. So they, they, they're they providing yeah. the roof over my head so that when I'm working, I can save money. I can invest it into music. I can do what I love. Yep. So uh, a lot of love for my parents. So. Right on. What are your, um, speaking of like where you're working, saving money, what is your, what's the side hustles? What's the day job? look like for you um I, I can't pretend that i've got some really exciting side hustles that we can't talk about or anything yeah. um, unfortunately i can i can talk about all my side hustles yeah so um currently i work at tesco um uh -huh. which is just um again i'm not sure how familiar everybody is with it it's just like a yeah. um, main main grocery form. chain basically in, in the uk it's the biggest yeah and it's like a little the little corner shop version mm -hmm. and you know, I work, I work to the, I basically work to the tax bracket because um, there's no point really working too much more than that when it comes mm. to like a work-life balance at the right. moment for me. Um, so most of my money does come from there at the moment. Um, yep. I get a little bit of money selling acapella kits and mm -hmm. beats on, um, whether that's Twitter, artists here in real life. Um, right. So that's a little bit of money I get from the music, mm -hmm. a little bit from the merch as well. Um, we made a profit on the t-shirts recently, which is great. Awesome, yeah. And uh, I do dabble a little bit in my crypto as well. I think mm -hmm. everybody dabbles a little bit in crypto at the moment. Yeah. But um, I think at the moment, currently, my side hustles are just a little bit of beer money. That's that's currently what they are. Yeah. Um, but one of my aims this year is to try and get the side hustle so that they can um, supplement, at least supplement, maybe even cover my current income. Yep. Um. But yeah, for the future, I, I am currently studying, um, I'm doing a personal trainer course. I've got literally notes here. It's what yeah. I'm doing today. So that's going to be the thing that funds my career um, mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, that's the, uh, the current the current plan. You know, right on. Yeah, I remember I hadn't heard about it as much as a while. And maybe that's, you know, we've, I remember last year you talking about, um, you know, gyms being closed and things like that. But I remember a, a year or two ago, like... Um, Knowing that you were that you were into fitness, you were interested in uh, PT and and um, like furthering furthering that as well. So, good on you for how long's the the course take or when do you complete that? And is it like a um, certification well, or how does that work? It will it will be certification. Um, mm -hmm. 
I've got to get my certificate for my level two whenever they <laughs> whenever they get it done. I've finished yeah. all all the training I need to do for it. Yeah. I've learned everything I need to learn. Um but because there's a backlog in the system right now, mm. um, I don't know if that's because of lockdowns and COVID or not, but um, I just got to wait on that for level two. So yeah. I'm doing all my revision material I can for level three right now. And then once I've got my level three, I can take clients and sort of, I guess, you know, being a bit more in control of the income that I make. So. Yeah. So something that's interesting for me, because this is something I've been thinking about for a while, and maybe this is where it, uh, the kind of spark for you or came from, but with these acapella kits, so I spend a ridiculous amount of time and I have so many voice notes on my phones, snippet of like melodies and things that I don't personally care enough about or won't put in the time to develop into full songs but i've been like compiling them into into bundles and things how did this uh acapella kit thing come about for you and do you uh what's the what's your like um you know pricing structure how do you distribute those give me some game here right so basically this all started with um <clears throat> producer twitter so shout out mm -hmm. to all the people on um producer twitter and there's a guy mm -hmm. called um I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say his name. He's yeah. uh, Josh on the beat, and um, I'll have to type it into the chat. How Go it's for spelled. It. Yeah. Josh on. I think it's Josh on the beat. Otherwise, I'll have to get his. Name. But um, I'll, I'll get his exact Twitter name in a sec. I'll just have to pull it up. But anyway, he Dope. was doing a um, a consultation course yeah. for selling beats because I thought you know, mm. I came into the. When was it when we did this? It must have been maybe November time. Um, mm. And I was thinking, like, cool. I need to try and find a way to make a bit more money from the music so i was looking at beats yeah and I, i'd heard him i'd heard, seen him on twitter i'd seen a few other people being like you know give things for free um you know build up a, a fan base that way and talking about kits i never really knew what my niche was mm -hmm. and he did this video and i don't know i think it'd been in the back of my mind somewhere and i just had to pull it forward about these acapellas because um i made a lot of music last year as well i'm just yeah. thinking what can i do with it and it sort of all came together. It's like, I have a lot of music. Um, I could repurpose this music into a niche with the same mm -hmm. strategies that this guy was telling me about on his course. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, yeah, why not? So I recorded a couple new ones and compiled together a kit with 10 um, acapellas in. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, well, no, yeah. All of them, you can get the mixed and the raw stems. So mm -hmm. depending on what the artist is looking for, we have, um, you know, I'm trying to find this. We have, uh, you know, examples for them to use. And then yeah. the idea was to give a couple free ones away. So I thought, okay, mm -hmm. cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I had the kit ready. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do one tweet. I'm going to say, is anyone here looking for some acapellas? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie, it, it kind of, like, for me, it kind of mm. went a little bit viral because, nice. um, yeah. if anyone's wondering why I'm looking away from the screen, I'm just finding a link for this guy. Yeah, you can link it right in the chat, the perfect. Yeah, um, but he, but yeah, basically, I gained, um, oh, I think I doubled my followers overnight. Yeah. Well, I only had, like, 100 followers, I went to 200. Yeah. And I was sending, like, 100 different links of this free vocal. Mm-hmm vocals i had you know a couple of vocals just bam 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 yeah off to everyone and <clears throat> um you know to be honest the majority of those people didn't use it yeah. but um some people did and i got some free beats that way basically so if mm -hmm. i wasn't a producer myself i mm -hmm. could have just got people to basically make me a new song yeah um and then some people used it um some people hit me up asking if i had more so i made a couple of sales doing that yeah. Um, one of the guys who asked me if I had more, he's the guy who ended up doing the uh, This Time Around EP, which mm -hmm. used a lot of those acapellas. Um, and yeah, it's just sort of went from there. It's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. So I think the next steps for me are a website. Um, an email I'm list. I'm starting to build an email list. Yeah. I've got um, 35 emails and an email list, but I need awesome. to learn to automate that. Yeah. And uh, try and push the actual kit itself a bit more as well. Because mm -hmm. I've not actually been pushing it, to be fair. I've just been yeah. word of mouth type thing. But yeah, man, it's a good idea. I mean, obviously, if you've got all these vo voice notes and ideas, um, 
you could definitely look at doing that yourself as well. Because yeah. what I didn't realize was I was looking at going into a niche that was lo-fi hip hop and boom bap. Mm-hmm. So sort of anything from maybe 78 to like 90 BPM, you know, with all break beats and stuff. But it's literally, I couldn't find anybody who was doing any acapella kits. Like mm-hmm. there's, okay, there's a few people who do the vocal one shots. Yeah. You know, you get a singer and you whatever, tap, tap it in, you know. One of, one of these bad boys or something yeah yeah i know i know but, what you I mean, mean yeah but yeah and i was just thinking well damn why doesn't somebody sort of capitalize on it mm-hmm. and like most of these producers are trap producers i wouldn't consider myself a trap artist um mm-hmm. anymore but um yeah it's just like a big big market and mm-hmm. when you think like rappers need beats but i suppose the producers need raps if they mm-hmm. want to make a hip hop song. And I think you probably know as well, um, rappers are notorious for being um, unreliable. <laughs> With, I know yeah, like delivering the collabs. And, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. But um, so for somebody to be like, yeah, I can just literally buy mm-hmm. these vocals. I'm selling it $40 for the pack at the moment, mm-hmm. uh, 50% royalties. And, um, yeah, you just $40. Right, straight, right in front of you. You can use this when you want. I can, mm-hmm. I can just. I'm not waiting on anyone. I can make as much yeah. music as I want right now. And um, yeah, it just sort of went from there, to be honest. So yeah, that's awesome. I love, I love that. I love that. So I mean, I'm sure you've you've seen it from me doing all the the so many hours of Twitch streams and stuff over the last few years, and and uh, oh yeah, you know Patreon and and. Um, just little thing doing this like voiceover work and all these little like side things I do to try and get some money from recording things versus only only having to go you know work somewhere and um I really really respect and I think I wish people would be a little more creative uh, as an artist with those types of things I think it's necessary at the very least to give yourself like a an in and a boost towards getting to to where you want to be because a lot of artists it's 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 very traditional it's it's um first of all unrealistic expectations of stream revenue as if you're like spotify or something like that but then it's that yeah. shows and merch and that is a, a a trinity of um of artists music artist things basically and music artist income traditionally but there's so much more you can do with all these other bits of content and things that uh artists are already going to be creating or dealing with just through their process and so i think it's really good for uh for artists to find other ways to to spin things that they that they make uh, as well so i think yeah i think that's cool to to have the uh, acapella kits how often are you trying to do those like releasing a new one um, well, I've, uh, I've not really thought too much about, um, new ones. It is yeah. something I, I, I want to do at some point. Um, because this one really came about just from songs I had left over. Um, right. and to be honest, it's right a lot more now, work as well. If you're doing full acapellas versus just the one shots for. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, all being said, um, if I was desperate, like I can, I can, I can quite comfortably put out, um, uh, make a song in a day. Yeah. you know mm-hmm. i can write a new song every day if i wanted to so if i wanted to do another 10 day kit mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. um it'd take me 10 days yeah <laughs> that's the yeah. uh the simplest way to put it so i'm not stressing too much about trying to get a new one out what i need to focus on right now is building up my current fan base mm-hmm. when it comes to the kits not just me not just charlie J the musician mm-hmm. but charlie J the um entrepreneur i suppose yeah um build up my fan base in that sense to try and push it further and then, like you mentioned with your interestingly with Patreon and all that, there mm-hmm. are other avenues as well that you can go to get money yeah. from it. So, for example, if I did create like a Patreon mm-hmm. and it was like, if you subscribe and you spend, say, $5 a month, you will get um, a free acapella yep. every month, a free exclusive mm-hmm. acapella every month. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, uh, that's another way to go about it. So there's different different routes and avenues you can go with it. But I think right now I still need to build that fan base. That's number one. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you could always always uh, hit up the OnlyFans, get yourself some, uh, <laughs> get yourself yep. some, some some extra there. Um, awesome, awesome. What's what's uh, are you looking forward to music wise? In uh, there's Brian in the chat. 
what are you looking forward to music wise this year? And you've already, like you said, you've been productive with what you're putting out. What what's what are upcoming releases for you? What are you excited about? What are you making? Um, well, I- I'm still sitting on a fair bit of music. So mm-hmm. funny enough, Brian being in the chat, um, I think it's probably a good time to mention that right now he's currently mixing and mastering an EP that I've got coming soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could, I could pro- probably go into detail about like the, the, the ideas and thoughts and processes behind that project as well yeah. in a sec, but not to sort of backtrack. Um, cause that's Brian, the brain, the, the Dutch month. connection. Yeah. But that's coming out just before my 21st birthday so that's going to come out april 2nd and um just to backtrack from that i have a project that i produced for a singer in cardiff Mm -hmm. which is coming out on the 8th of march if all goes well um so that's like a little neo soul r&b type project type vibe um sick to be fair like she's a great artist um fair dues how many tracks did you work on on that um it's only three songs but Mm -hmm. i'm not sure what the promotion and Right, you know details with that. One of the times I was like sharing a snippet on my Instagram or one of the songs, and she's like, "Don't share it." So uh-huh. I'm like, "No." <laughs> so I had to, um, I had to watch that. So yeah, you know, it's, but that that's cool. That is, it's a promotional um, deal behind that as well. She's mm-hmm. um, she's very well connected. That's what mm-hmm. I got to say. So big things could come from that. Nice. And um, yeah, and also a couple of features coming on Friday. Mm-hmm. So one of them I did back in, oh, must have been August, September time. And then another one I recorded at the beginning of the year, which was a connection I made from the acapella kits. Somebody downloaded yeah. with the free ones and she was like, yo, I got this song. Do you want to hop on it? And I thought, yeah, I'll give it a shot. You know, you know, we made something we liked. So that's coming as well. So, um, yeah, back to back to the EP. Yeah. Um, the EP is um, self-produced. Mm-hmm. Um set i just got a text for you um yeah so back to the to the ep itself the ep self-produced um i did get a bit of help from a mate of mine called katie who's an amazing bassist an amazing mm-hmm. guitarist she's recorded some some stuff on that and uh, the idea behind it was um it's called middle times so the idea mm-hmm. behind it was the times between the first two lockdowns in the uk where we could go and see people right and, and yeah. do some stuff so it's kind of like reminiscing vibes over all of that. So, I, lo- I love the uh, uh, title and concept to it as well. Yeah, but- man, I'm go- I'm actually gonna put together a like a little three part documentary about the sort of creation, inspiration, and everything with it as well. Awesome. I love that. What are you right now? What are your um? You, you talked about you know wanting to build your fan base and things, and we're all having to adapt right now and and figure things out to, with with uh, various degrees of lockdown and such. What are your kind of main promotional and fan building tools right now? What are you focusing on in your your content and stuff? Um, the, I think there's been a bit of a change recently for me uh, when it comes to this because I think in the past I was just sort of relying on. Um, like the music itself, right? Um, sometimes collabs, um, visuals, just building up a brand, basically build up a brand, build up a catalog, go from there. But um, I did a little, we played it on the stream on, when yeah. was it now? Saturday, yeah. little remix video that mm-hmm. I did. And everybody loved that. I'm like, yeah. they got more love than my last single, to be fair. I'm just like, yeah. what? Like this is something I took together in a day. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna look at doing maybe more things like that. More like little remixes, um, freestyles, um, again, no, live the, like the in studio performances can do really well, like that kind of thing, just in yeah, in bedroom recordings. Exactly, yeah. So there's like little little things like that that I need to try and um, get together, stick mm-hmm. together. Um, paid adverts is something I'm looking at as well. I have yeah. you know just dabbled a little bit of money here and there um, into you know the, you can do like targeted ads on Facebook. Right. You can and obviously Facebook and Instagram being connected, you can target the people that like your mute like. Your, your particular fans you expect mm-hmm. so for you for example you might go cool so i'm i'm looking for guys who are um maybe between the ages of 18 and 30 um maybe for you there would be like fans of matt miller or mm-hmm. freestyle rap um 
I want them in these areas. So you might say, cool, I want to build a, my fan base in Sweden because that's where I currently am. I want to target yeah. people in Sweden. And, um, you know, that's that, that could be your, your starting point for your, your targets. And then we, maybe you find out, cool, so maybe my music's actually resonating more with people who are between 20 and 24 than the extremities. So mm-hmm. you tighten it in again. Maybe um, more men like my music than women. I will get on that point in 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 a second. There's there's yeah. something I do want to talk about that, yeah. that I don't think many people have mentioned about um, gender specifics in fan bases. But um, yeah. so you get cool men are more receptive. I'm going to focus basically you tighten in your focus with the paid ads, and then you get more um, better conversion like more rate. click throughs, mm-hmm. better conversion rate. That's what I'm looking. For. So yeah, the same same thing for you then. You're mainly just doing your your streams then for your promo right now. Um, you what know, I spend absolutely for better or for worse more definitely this it's i wouldn't say it's not even close but it's definitely spend much more time on community content and promo than i do like hour for hour on actual music creation right now and sometimes i'm okay with that sometimes i'm not i'm kind of okay with it right now i really enjoy making kind of dumb skits for tiktok and stuff so i don't worry too like too much about the like the time spent into it same with streaming i enjoy doing it um yeah and uh but but for me the main i have a lot of of basically promo stuff and basically that is instagram and tiktok content i have something every single day um sometimes that's an instagram post and a reel and stories sometimes it's just stories and one or the other um the streams five days a week and then this is what a lot of people don't necessarily know or I, i post about it sometimes but um i a huge thing for for me has been um reddit live streaming this past six months And um, I will, a lot of times what I will do is I will go live on the days that I'm going to stream on Twitch or do like freestyles or something that's kind of like musically engaging. I'll do that thing for 30 to 45 minutes on Reddit first where there's a much bigger discoverability because you could have, you know, peaks of several hundred or a thousand people watching you or even your, my consistent viewers on when I do like a freestyle stream on Reddit you know, uh, when I'm freestyling on Twitch, probably bounce between five and ten people at any given moment. Um, when I do it on Reddit, the consistent number would be the lowest would be 25, 30, and more average would be 50 to 100 would be consistent throughout the stream. And what I'll do then is I'll make sure that I have an overlay or mention that I'm going live on Twitch afterwards. And there's been a lot of being able to kind of convert people into being viewers and, and engaging other other places from that. So there definitely are people who uh, are in the Twitch streams who play my music and stuff like that who have just found me through Reddit. Um, so um, cool. those are those are kind of main ones. For me, I just like live streaming as well because I think it's kind of the epitome of what people have grown to expect in the modern day where you can be so back and forth in your communication with artists. It's the the most live version of that where you have an artist or someone you might like or want to follow and you can instantly talk with them or roast them when they mess up or ask questions or or whatever in the chat and that's yeah. you know some real-time communication that kind of i think endears people to you and uh it's a, a good good thing to do so so yeah the, it's the daily the social media and the um i don't know the memes and the live streams the memes and the streams that's my that's my content strategy the memes and the streams. yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I mean, I, I'll always, I'll always, I've always been a fan of like in-person stuff as well. Mm. So obviously there's a bit less now. I mean, depending on where you are in the world, yeah. shout out to everybody who may be in New Zealand right now watching yeah. this, who's yeah. like, oh, there's nothing wrong. It's normal. Yeah. Um, and the Isle of Man as well, actually. The Isle of Man have no uh, lockdown as well, which is yeah. strange. Shout out, so shout out to, to Florida, who everyone is constantly in a haze of COVID and they just go about it anyways, I guess. Everything's yeah, open um, regardless. <laughs> But like when I'm working, I will I will tell my, the customers about my music. Which yeah, is a shameless yeah. plug. Yeah. And um, I you know I get some people are like, oh, he's just always promoting his music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
I've had a fair few fans come from there. Yes. And I've had a fair few people actually buy my merch yep. because they know me as, you know, oh, the, the guy the, the guy in Tesco yeah. raps or whatever. Yeah. You know? And this, this goes back to what I was saying about gender before. Mm. Um, like, most of the people who've actually bought my merch, mm. most of the people who share my music, right, mm-hmm. despite my fan base currently being about three quarters male, mm-hmm. one quarter female, majority of them that go out of the way to support me are female. Mm-hmm. It's mostly women, girls, the ones who buy my merch, the ones who share my music on Instagram stories. So it's like, that's got to be, I suppose, you got to focus on the artist. It's like, cool, if you're an artist who just listens to mm-hmm. or um, follows but doesn't support, cool, we want to support you. But it's like the 80-20 thing. You want to work on the 20% who are like really... Taking action on enticing. things. Really, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like, I'm not sure if it's the same with you. Like the, the paid supporters, like, is that more more women than your, your overall fan base, or is uh, that just... pretty? It's a pretty even split. Um, for as far as um, people like actually taking action on things, it's also a little different skewed too with platforms like Far and Away. Um, my most income right now from any of the side hustles is from from twitch there's not much else that's that's close and um that platform already is heavily skewed male and most of the people who support who who sub who donate etc um are men on on twitch but not definitely not exclusively um merch physical purchases is a pretty even split and yeah. then, funny enough, um, social engagement, then it does start skewing female. Like, if I look at TikTok, it's definitely more a uh, female audience who see things and, and stuff. But Yeah. I'm going to open that up and look at the percentage here in a second. I got to I gotta see. Yeah, what? It's, it's, it's an interesting sort of thing to look at. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you have a creator account on TikTok, too, you get all kinds of analytics that... It can break break things down and and see how your who your posts are doing well with and and what's going on with them, which is uh, which is pretty fun. I mean, to be honest, like I never really got into TikTok properly, and yeah, like I know. I know I probably should, but it just sort of I don't know. It just <laughs> I don't know if it's just the appeal. I'm not trying to be snobby or whatever yeah. about different apps, but it just didn't. The format didn't really like fit doesn't seem to fit what mm. I, I do i can't think of you know i suppose like what you do is kind of it's, it's fun and i know maybe i'm making excuses for myself now it's like it, there is a little niche for you to do little fun duets and stuff right. like that and like maybe i could do the same but it's like i don't know it just didn't but yeah, i, I think you know you want to you want to take advantage of the tools that are available but i think you also want to do it in an authentic way and so different things fit with different people's brands better um, you know, like I think if you look at, I really like making people laugh. I've always just been funny and just enjoyed like capitalizing on that side of things. And so, um, you know, for example, I think more of your fans, uh, expect and likes it, you know, like polished music videos and, and visuals and things like that. And more of mine, like, I don't know, kind of tongue in cheek stuff that they know will be a little bit funny or not take itself too seriously. And so I think it's different yeah. tools lend themselves to, to different things better. So, um, you know, something interesting, some new opportunities. Hello. Hello, Nico in the, in the chat. Hope you're well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, uh, one thing interesting too, though, is to keep like kind of looking at these new platforms things like clubhouse which i haven't done much engagement on i have an account but um things like uh youtube shorts which i don't know i guess yeah everyone needs their tiktok now so but youtube's got that but you never know what the reach will be like you know uh instagram reels has been kind of surprising in their reach actually um so that's something to something to look at but Instagram for me feels like this is a little bit of a tangent, but Instagram for me is still a little bit messy since they try and fit three or four apps in one app, basically, Mm. since they have minute long posts and 30 second posts exist in reels and longer than one minute exist in IGTV and you have daily stories and it can get a little 
fragmented. So I don't I don't know where I where I stand on on that exactly, but um, yeah, yeah. Who knows? I had a, a, another question for for you though. Earlier, when we were talking about targeting and, and ads and things, and you mentioned Mac Miller, and uh, I know sometimes when I do the Reddit streams and stuff, I will get that. Especially if I'm sitting with a baseball cap and freestyling, and some sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's uh, a compliment, and sometimes it's you know Walmart Mac Miller is uh, is yeah. is what I'll, what I'll get as well. But what I was gonna yeah, ask I know is. Cool is what um what artists do you could be compare yourself to or get comparisons to from time to time and um they could be the same or could be different but also who are your actual kind of some some inspirations that maybe you draw from um so i mean it really depends on who the listener is Mm -hmm. who they compare me to because um Obviously, when you're when you're going through like a, a subreddit or something, and there's obviously hip hop fans, they're going to be right. straight away like, "Yo, Matt Miller." Mm. Um, but then, like, I've performed at festivals and gigs where people don't know a lot of artists, they don't mm-hmm. know a lot of rappers, so they sort of go from there. Right. So, like, on the broadest, broad, broadest spectrums, the broadest ones, you sort of get the the whole like, "Oh, he's um, when I, back when I lived up north in Morecambe, there's someone mm-hmm. say, "Oh, he's Morecambe's answer to Stormzy or something uh-huh. like that." Uh-huh. I've had a couple of <laughs> People listen to uh, some of the tracks on my EP be like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, there's a couple of things here that do sound like something Stormzy would make. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I see that. Sometimes I think, is it just because I rap with a, you know, a British accent? Yeah, and people yeah. Are like, well, it's probably a big um, part of it. <laughs> Let's be honest. And then I've also had, um, what the hell is that from? This come in the chat. Okay. I do poetry, poetry. Poetry. Cool. I poetry reading, but it's a poetry writing. I'll, I can I can I uh, tap into this afterwards, Nico. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on with the yeah. with the interview right now. Yeah, we'll tap into it in a sec. But yeah, and then um, I've also had um, like the obviously J Cole um, reference. People say mm-hmm. some of these stuffs like J Cole. I've had some people say Freddie Gibbs. I think that's sometimes with the beat choices, which mm-hmm. is great. You know, these artists that I do listen to a fair bit. Yeah, I think the one that is probably the closest right now. Not all the music I make, but a fair bit is Loyal Karna. I don't know how many people know Loyal Karner in here. I don't think I but, do. Um, he's, 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 he's fairly well known in the UK. He's like a mm-hmm. jazz rap, old school hip hop type of guy. And okay. um, a lot of his music is very wholesome and from the heart. And, um, yeah, I think that's probably the one that I've had a fair few people say. And to be fair. Oh, there's another one I thought of as well that people say, Bugsy Malone. You know, it's yeah. all like, <laughs> he's scrolling in because Bugsy Malone's from Manchester. So he's got a northern accent. Yeah. So people are like, the widest spectrum's like, oh, Stormzy. You know, everyone knows Stormzy, yeah. British rapper. Then it's like, targets in a bit. He's like, oh, he's got a northern accent. Yeah. He's got to be like H or Bugsy Malone. And then people who actually like listen to my type of music I make are like, oh, cool. He's a he's a British guy with wholesome yeah. lyrics um, over like a sort of jazzy rap beats. Um, obviously, not all my music's like that. You know, Skeletons isn't like that. Right. But um, they're like, cool, yeah, little kind of. So that's sort of how it goes. They sort of depends on you know, your thing, so... Yeah, skeletons. Skeletons, by the way, goes go, goes a little bit hard though. We played that on the 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 stream. I, yeah. I enjoyed that one. He sounded. Thank you, man. Yeah. He sounded sounded you know sounded sounding a bit British there with tings in the in the hook. I mean, yeah, I've yeah. had I've had a few people go on road man. Oh, he's trying tings. to be a road man. And I'm just like, dude, have I, I linked you or? I know what it's supposed. Yeah. Dude, have I linked you or sent you the guy? It's like in the dark of vlogs. This is name or something like that but he started dude i have to send them to you he and his output is insane like he's blown up and then he's run with it so he's doing these videos that are quite a production like almost every day or every day and he has a tiktok account that's gone up several hundred thousand followers recently and he literally does all these skits that are like I don't know, like if if your teacher or if your like psychiatrist was a roadman and like spe- or your bus driver oh, no. like speaks roadman, dude, fucking <laughs> hell! It's just like the t- the uh, someone like someone like raising their hand and he's just like, "What what you dickhead? What you want?" <laughs> and like it's just fucking cracks. <laughs> this cracks oh, me up. Uh, but yeah, anyways, yeah, I'll man. I'll just send you some of that. Dude's, dude's pretty send funny. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Man. Oh. What um, for you? What would have been? I've I've tr- asked this or tried to remember to ask this when when I've had people on. What for you have been um, 
maybe like a couple of career highlight moments so far. You know, we're all at different phases as we go along, but there's definitely things that like jump out to me where it's like, oh, you got a message from this person or you were able to do something or perform somewhere that kind of sticks out at you. Do you have some some milestones? Um, probably the, the one that sticks out to me the most, that was a while ago now, it was probably um, when the Cash Converters was played on BBC right. Radio um, Wales, the like, yeah. introducing side of it. So again, for the people who are not from the UK, um, in the UK, the BBC, um, mm-hmm. which is like a big broadcasting um, company. Yeah, not, not um, the porn they, one. No, not that one. But um, they basically um, have this thing called Introducing, where upcoming artists can su- submit music mm-hmm. and they can be played on national radio. So uh, it wasn't like the actual BBC Radio 1 introducing. It was the, you know, the BBC Radio Wales one, which mm-hmm. was still cool. Yeah. But that's probably like, for me, it's like most of the defining moments in my career have all been self-made. So that's probably the one that sort of, because it's not self-made, it was, a, you know, an external factor. That's probably one that does stand out to me. So mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. Yeah. What, um, your merch you did recently, I was thinking about, because you've mentioned selling merch a few times. You did that and having uh, having a stock of the, the shirts yourself, right? You were saying you went profitable on it recently, so you had to invest yeah. a certain amount. And... They're literally under my bed right now. I could probably yeah. find the... Uh... Can we can we can we get a, can we get a peek at one of them? Oh yeah, we can. Hey, you know, oh, maybe so, maybe up, someone on stream is trying to trying to cop a t-shirt. Oh, the lid's lid's kind of funny. One sec, I know it's an awkward angle right now. Right. But you're good. You're good. You're good. We will we will get there with a the t-shirt. Otherwise, I'll just get the one that I wear. Yeah, I'll just get the one I wear. But yeah, there's a box on my bed that's literally full with um, Charlie J t-shirts. Love um, it. Not this one. But yeah, it just. I don't know. I know what you were saying. Do you use Teespring, is it, for your, for your merch? I, I was going to, and then I've been using Printful. Um, Printful. In, instead. Um, I like. Because, I just like their product range better. Right, is this the... Oh, it's inside out at the moment. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I just found, like, when it came to unit costs and what yeah. I was able to, able to do, it was just a, a better for me to get it and yeah. sort of store them in person. So this has just come, come out of my... My wardrobe a bit unfolded and stuff, but we're gonna flip the camera so that people can actually see it on my bed. Yeah, no stress. Can we flip the camera in Discord? Hell if I know. Oh yeah. Right. If it's gonna load. Oh. I didn't do uh, it. So, come back. on. Bruh. There we go. There we go. So yeah. Yeah, there's, the logo is the logo is clean. I like that. Um we have Charlie J on the arm as well. And then yeah. on the the collar, there is also Charlie J. Love it. So, yes. Yeah, so, it's a nice little, uh, little T-shirt. And, you know, I've seen people wearing them in all sorts of situations. I know there's a few people I know just wear them as bed T-shirts or whatever. And yeah. Other people have seen wearing them when they're out. And, well, the only place we can go is the shop. So, basically, yeah. they come into my work <laughs> wearing them. Um, but it is nice to see that I'm, I'm getting that love. Yeah, and I like, I think uh, kind of understated um, merch is, it was why I went with all my stuff having like kind of the single motif with the, the pineapple and stuff is I think that, um, I don't know, I like I like having merch that people actually want to wear <laughs> or that like looks good for its yeah. own sake and it's like you want them to want to support you but like some people yeah. have like these, I don't know, just go over the top and tacky with it, especially with it. So I like having a nice uh, logo like that. It's, it looks good. Yeah, I'm also going to have like my face plastered all over it yeah. and then somebody go chained to wear it. Like, yeah. I don't want to wear it. I want to support him, but I don't want to wear it. I didn't want that. Yeah. I wanted something that people yeah. could wear with their normal clothes and it looks good. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's got the, the logo there too. It's just on a black tee as well. It's got uh, It's got some nice like streetwear vibes. Like you could just have it with yeah. a pair of jeans and and look good. Um, is there anything you wanted to discuss here? For I got some. I don't know if I think of any closing questions, but no, I don't think there's really um, too too much. I mean, we could go down a whole rabbit hole about the plans when things open up, how we're going to get the ball rolling. But that's just uh, such an open ended question. So oh. It's down to you. 
could ask you what your what's your what's your 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 sort of exit strategy then oh um, we've transition is a lot lock, we flipped we flipped it we flipped, i gotta answer questions um no yeah. i for me i do so i'm so i'm such a fucking recluse anyways um yeah that i think it will be a i will need to have a kind of concerted push like push myself to look for show opportunities and stuff again because like, it's easy to get yeah. complacent and like i'm like yeah whatever i'll do i'll do my streams five days a week and do do a virtual concert again and stuff and i want to get out performing because i know like once i do i love i love doing it and i like being on stage yeah, more nice. um but it's always for me there's always that hump when you haven't done it in in a long time um and you've got mm-hmm. to be like okay i haven't for the last year I haven't been making space in my schedule for rehearsing and figuring out sets and how am I going to perform things and and making that a a mental focus. So all of a sudden you got to say, okay, well, what have I done with that time and where am I going to use it or focus on it? But the other thing I know I definitely want to do because I feel like I've fallen out of touch with so many friends that were from this event is I was doing these rap like Stockholm events that I was hosting um, before lockdown. And that was an incredible. Yeah. Um, and we would have like 20 rappers each doing a, you know, eight to 12 minute set over the course of a long evening. And, um, yeah. and, and that was really, really fun. And so I want to get doing those again. I think that would be the first thing that I, that I focus on. And because I think another thing too, is that, that's something I have control of. Also, when things start opening back up, um, I think if you're early on the move for being someone who creates events and creates shows, you're going to have a lot of good opportunities because so many clubs and venues are starving and they want someone to do that. So, you know, approaching approaching a place and saying like, yeah, let's, you know, one of these first opening weekends, you've got stuff going on again like i've got an event i've got all these people who are ready to perform uh i think that's a good opportunity to so i want to establish a relationship with a venue early on i think that's the main thing for me the rest of the shows and opportunities you know as you know a lot of those things just come like tangentially it's from just random connection with someone and you met someone here and they saw you and mentioned something else one thing I really hope I get to do again, because I was on the shortlist to do it this past year again, and then they, you know, obviously canceled it for COVID. But uh, you know, I don't know if Brian's still in the in the chat, but I want to go back to that that Nobel after party was wild that we did in 2019 when Brian flew over here and and uh, him and I and and Stephanie all got to to go to that and be fancy. So I'd love to. I'd love to do that again, yeah. and I and I learned some things from the. It was a really good, like everything was. A, it was a good experience, but I learned some things as well that I think I can like capitalize on uh, connections and and reach from doing that type of uh, event again. So we'll see. We we'll got I got a you know eleven months to or ten months to see if that uh, comes about or how that pans out. But it's true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. Probably, uh, to be fair, that's probably similar to what my what my plans are going to be. Like, um, there's not really anything here in South Wales that is like a, a. This probably sounds like I'm dissing a few people now, but I'm not. Just we're being realistic. Yeah. Um, there's no proper, um, consistent platform for Welsh artists on the come up right now. Mm-hmm. For artists to, you know, I want to focus more on like an, an urban scene. You know, like you know, I've got a lot of love for my my, my bands and my my indie songwriters and mm-hmm. stuff. But I want to focus on like a, an urban platform because yeah. I know a lot of you know rappers and R and B singers and stuff. Um, we can build a platform for them, like a, a monthly sum of my own money, which is cool. Yeah. We use that as a means of like building something when things open up. That's one of the main things I want to focus on. I obviously also want to be doing more. Um, music videos and stuff as well because my original plan back in june i think it was was i was going to do 12 music videos 12 singles and four eps um in the next year yeah um which june dude make a make a start a start a rap like cardiff event when you 
and things. Rap like Cardi. Dude, I would love yeah, to have that be like a like... movement where people just pop up their own like hip hop. Because it was so, it was like you're not at an open mic where like it's a coffee shop and people aren't there for hip hop or whatever. It's like the whole thing is like everyone there is to perform and to see hip hop. So you have this huge crowd of people that like actually wants to see that. And you get a bunch of artists who might not sell a ton of tickets for their own shows. The opportunity to like put on really cool sets like... Um, I don't know. I think yeah, it's a, a format more like more places should should have. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So the the idea would be probably to have some smaller artists, you know, like you mentioned there, but mm. obviously try and bring some bigger names in as well from the city. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just sort of build up that platform to gets to a point where we can get artists who are from other places in the UK, be mm. like, yo, I want to do a show in Wales. Yeah. I'm gonna come down to charlie's gig and we'll do something there um yeah more music videos i want to spend more time in the actual studio as well mm -hmm. i've got a little setup here in my house but um being in person with producers being in person with artists um to actually try and get some like more proper collabs yeah done and dusted just sort of just keep building keep you know being a presence you know um I, I did mention it in the porch, but unfortunately I found out recently, like i got confirmation that um you know there's, there's a bit of a click in the cardiff music scene mm -hmm. and um you know, I know that they're in this clique in particular. They're not the biggest fan of me. I don't know if that's yeah. my music or I don't think it's my music. I think it's um, I don't know what it is. Um, but um, the one of the words that somebody said was that I'm ethic. gonna be <laughs> yeah, um, that I'm gonna become a problem. So uh, that's the uh, you know, if they want to say a problem is the terms they want to use, then yeah. maybe that's the case. But I'm just gonna be. Right. omnipresent in the uh south wales scene it'd be impossible to avoid me it's gonna be yeah. so much music and on shows can't ignore me for that long yeah. you know at some point switch on you know i love it i'm glad it. what are you yeah. uh closing here you know anyone else who wants to pursue something creative or even with music um you know they're a teenager and they want to start start rapping start producing any any uh advice for them anything you would leave them with on starting that journey? um yeah i'd say the, mo the most important thing that you need to sort of realize and utilize is the power of a day so if you can do a little bit of something every single day mm -hmm. and you can have it in your routine every single day yeah if that's half an hour a day if that's you know an hour a day is even better mm -hmm. and you just build that up every single day you're working every single day you make a beat every yep. single day you write a verse you know you might think oh you know it's it'll take me ages to get to where i want to be whether it's creatively building a fan base whatever but like you know if even if you if, if you made a beat every single day you got 365 beats at the end of the year. that's yeah. that's a good number and you yeah. see how far you come in that time as well if you're people and like that oh, is like, more output than 99 percent of the people who think that or, or who would say they're producers but they they don't practice something daily and they you know think like oh i have a chunk of time this weekend or whatever exactly and um for example last year i made 106 song demos mm -hmm. and um people are like oh my god that's so much whoa your work ethic must be mad but when you think of it it's like two songs a week mm -hmm. it's not even that bad yeah so if you can utilize and get into a routine every single day doing something build up from there put the hours in you know ten thousand hours is literally what you got to aim for you know every single day a little bit it adds up it really does yes so that's what i got Dude, i love that i love that power of the day good shit yeah there you go charlie yeah. I mean, on that note um yeah this one, one last thing you know, yeah hey, um, bring it about about this um funny enough next month actually marks five years since i've written a verse every night so okay that's, five years that is, every single night that is mad that is absolutely crazy that's something that good job good on yeah, you so. dude that's yeah yeah I fucking i fucking love that all right my friend yeah, uh thank you so much for agreeing to yeah, give me give me an hour of your time and and chat it up for a bit i appreciate like that. that um i'm gonna go oh any uh feel free to drop in the chat uh, anything you want to uh, to plug or socials, things like that, and I can put them in the description of uh, when I upload this as a YouTube video in a couple of days uh, as well. So, um, so people know where to find you. Your socials, uh, by and large, they're all official. Charlie J, is that correct? 
Yeah, except for Twitter, which is Music Charlie J, because unfortunately um, they don't let you have that many letters in your username. So, uh-huh. so. <laughs> official was too much. Got it. Yeah, you got the yeah. link tree. Perfect. Yeah, link tree with everything. Bang. Awesome. All right, thank you, my friend. I'm gonna uh, hang up and I'll debrief with the with the stream here. But have a dope rest of your oh, evening nice and good luck with the the evening it. verse. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. See bless. ya.